I know I'm in the chair again. I feel like I should mix it up, but I've got the I've got the tripod at the right height, <laughs> so it's so easy to set up. <laughs> okay, the mic is back in frame. I'm looking at audition. The little waveforms are too small, so I'm shoving it next to my face, <laughs> which, to be honest, is where it, it should be. But I just like anyway. <laughs> My name's Emma, I want to chat about the books that I read in August. There's only a few this time, um, not a massive reading month because I've been quite busy. I've had some weekends away, uh, which is also the reason why I'm recording this in the middle of September, but better late than never. So grab yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, sit down, and we'll chat about some books. First is Ruth Ozeki's The Book of Form and Emptiness, a book that has so far been featured in my unhaul video. So you can guess how I felt about it. <laughs> I didn't hate it, I didn't hate it, I just know that I got kind of bored by the middle and I'm not gonna read it again. Um, very possible I might see if there's anyone else who wants it before I give it away but yeah it doesn't need to live on my shelf. So I picked this up because it was the women's fiction prize winner and last year's that was Piranesi which is a fantastic book uh, and some of the other shortlists from last year um, were really great um, and really powerful. Uh, I didn't really, I've not had time to check out any of the other shortlisters this year, um, but I thought I really want to check out the winner. Um, and also the, it, I added it onto my TBR back when it was shortlisted because it sounded interesting. Um, it had this sort of kind of magical realism aspect, but now that I think about it, it doesn't really feel like magical realism. So I'll explain. Editing Emma cutting in because I've just looked back over the footage and I don't think I explain what I was saying about magical realism. Um, so the magical realism from the story comes from uh, the young boy hearing voices from objects and I think the concept is that maybe they actually do have personalities um, but the big through line of the book and the big format is that a lot of the story is told from the point of view of the book, the main character will write. But I feel like any sense of magical realism is more left up to interpretation. You know, it's not like a hundred years of solitude where someone just floats into the sky or there's butterflies that appear around a person for no reason. Um, so it yeah the title of magical realism i actually don't think fits i don't know well if you've read it what what are your thoughts uh you have this family mother father and uh the young son who is an older child in the sense of he he's sort of like a tween he's heading towards his teenage years but he's not yet there yet um, and sadly, the father dies in an accident. After the accident, the mother obviously gets depression and puts on weight and starts to hoard. Meanwhile, the son starts hearing voices. He hears the voices of objects um, as if they all have a personality and a purpose. And that's the sort of crux of the book. And I think my big issue is that <laughs> that doesn't really change. She keeps on hoarding and he keeps on hearing voices. And then towards the end, they don't do those things anymore. <laughs> it, it's just very sudden. Um, you know, there's, there's other things that happen. He skives off school and 
hangs out, in the, hangs out in the library and meets this homeless guy and this girl who went to his mental hospital and makes friends. But I can't really say anything major that happens. I can't pick any favourite scenes and considering it's quite a big book, um, it's kind of remarkable. <laughs> um, there's sort of this extra storyline about um, a Japanese monk who who's basically like the Mary Kondo. Uh, she's written this book about tidying uh, and we get passages about her life. We kind of think there'll be this meeting and maybe she'll fix everything but it doesn't quite go that way. <sighs> yeah, so there's there's a lot of stuff here that just feels like it's treading water. We're not getting any significant changes. Um, and I don't feel like the characters change themselves. I don't feel like they... <sighs> Learning a lesson is not the right thing because that's not what it's about. It's obviously about going through uh, grief. But someone who's been through grief didn't really hit that hard it's it's just it's almost like frustrating not frustrating about him hearing voices but just that things just keep staying the same and you just don't see a progression like i said until very near the end so yeah sadly not that impressed with it but that is book form and emptiness i yeah i don't think i can recommend it um, oh, and one other thing that I said in my unhaul video is that it reminded me of the kind of book that you'd be given in English Lit at school. Like when, you know, when they have to give you a more modern book, they're like, look, it's not all Shakespeare. We can, and it's not all of Mice and Men. We can give you something more modern. Uh, and then it, it ends up just being kind of rubbish because it's about this depressed teenage boy. It's always teenage boys. Um, and once I realised that, <laughs> I think it annoyed me more. <laughs> Not for me, sorry. Let's move on. Now forgive me if I've talked about this one before. I actually went back to my last video to see if I covered it then. Um, because I feel like I've sat and chatted about this book already. Um, and that is Gabriel Garcia Marquez's 100 Years of Solitude. Um, I, maybe I talked about it when I was midway through, possibly. Maybe it was in the vlog. Might have been the vlog. So, I picked this, I've been debating picking this up for a while, and then when Emmy Reads did a read along, thought now was the time to join in and do it. I have some complicated feelings about this book. Um, I think the complicated feeling is mostly from one particular moment early on uh, that features a child bride. Um, yes, I know there's a lot of arguments of it's a different... Like, he wrote it in, what, the 50s or 60s? It's not that old. Um, he wrote it in a different era. It's a different culture. But to me, I think there's certain things that I think are so terrible that those excuses don't stand up. Or at least I would... I think my issue isn't that the the man who wants the bride feels that way. That's going to happen. But I feel like everyone around him just treats it like a joke. And then the way that they treat it almost bothers me more. You know, they, they say, oh, isn't she amazing and wonderful? And, you know, it's an issue when children are raised up and treated like adults because they're so mature. When, no, children shouldn't have to be mature. Sh children should be children. So that part of the story <laughs> really bugged me and kind of really disgusted me a lot. Um, so I was only able to enjoy it once we got past that. Um, thankfully it is a short section near the start because this book covers years and years so if you feel the same as me just push through it and then carry on. Because the writing of this is 
beautiful and magic and you have these the concept of like time circling and repeating uh the future being mentioned ahead of time um and hinted at you know time is always circling circulating <laughs> time is moving forward but is also repeating itself and add to that the magical realism where odd things happen and you just have to accept it you know like someone is out drying sheets in the lawn and then just floats up to the sky and disappears and is never seen again <laughs> um but it's really quite beautiful and also sad um i think my favorite passage is uh this really dark section where uh <laughs> something's going on with like the banana company and the wor workers are fighting for better rights um and the town square is filled with people oh no like the square next to the train station is filled with people protesting and they are all gunned down all of them and one of our main characters is chucked on the train with all of the dead bodies because they think he's dead and he wakes up amongst this train with carriage after carriage of dead people sorry i know this is spoilers <laughs> um and then he has to make his way home but everyone he talks to on the way says nothing really happened everyone just sort of went home and no one believes that this huge tragedy happened and the sad fact is that this is based on truth um, and for me, that is when the book shone the most, is when it had its inspirations from real life. Um, so yeah, I I really went <laughs> I really went through phases with this book, and there'd be moments like that that I really appreciated. Um, but then you'd have like another incestuous relationship to read about, and. <sighs> Like, it's not as bad as this child ride, but it's like that is part of the not the joke, but that is part of the failings of the family that they keep falling into this trap. Um, you know, the very first generation that come to the like that set up the town are cousins, I believe. So, this is a purposeful and it is repeated and it is, you know the matriarch of the family tells people off when she thinks that this is going to happen um, and warns them, you know, your child will have a pigtail. Um, so yeah, I've flip-flopped between <laughs> enjoying bits and not enjoying other bits. Um, it has stuck with me, uh, which not every book does, so I really think that is something you know, I do keep thinking about it, um, which to me is always a sign that a book's done something special. I'm sorry if I've spoiled it. <laughs> um, I I would recommend reading it. There is the tough hurdle early on, but I really do think it's, it's very unique. I've not read a book like it, um, and that is always something nice to experience. I don't know why my voice is going. I think it's just too early for me to record her stuff. <laughs> so next is N.K. Jemison's The Obelisk Gate. Um, bit harder to talk about because it's the middle book of a trilogy. Uh, so I kind of said a lot of stuff that still carries over into this when I talked about the first one. Um, you know, the we still have the concept of these powerful beings who are mistreated because they are feared. Um, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, this is a hard thing. Um, so I'll just say we have this, we have the main character um, being in a new environment and sort of making new friends, which is quite nice. Um, um, we get to sit with characters that were just introduced at the end of the first book and we also get a second point of view of the daughter 
and her journey is heartbreaking i mean everyone's journey is heartbreaking because this is just a very harsh world um but you have this realization that (sighs) this is a very minor spoiler i'm sorry um skip ahead a minute if you don't want to hear it but you have this realization that the mother probably won't be able to just go save her daughter because it's been so long and her daughter probably doesn't want or need her help and that's that's so hard (laughs) and horrible um so you can i'm guessing nk jemison either has kids or has a particular relationship with her own mother because there's definitely deep themes of motherhood in this what else to say we get a little bit more of the tiny more a few more hints of the about the stone eaters who are these like walking statues and hints of like older civilizations and technologies um so that's intriguing and uh, i haven't put the third book in this group because i technically didn't read it in august but i have read it and we get more of that in the third book as well ah middle books are so hard to talk about i'm sorry (laughs) i'll leave it there because i don't want to spoil and it's the middle book it's tricky to talk about but it you know it continued to be great and i'll leave it there 20th century boys i finally (laughs) caught hold of this manga um i couldn't get a hold of monster i think i mentioned in a video i had it on order and i ended up cancelling the order because waterstones lied and they didn't have it in stock actually so i've managed to find this in my local waterstones that was good um i don't have any strong opinions on it yet i feel like it's still too soon um it's definitely setting up a much bigger story um we have this this uh, main character who is running a combini man it was a convenience store <laughs> and he is looking after his sister's baby so you have this quite cute image of him you know stacking shells while there's a baby on his back um but there's stuff going on about this cult and potentially either a giant monster or a robot is gonna destroy the, the world there's hints that very weird things are gonna happen um and turns out it all goes back to uh his childhood and his group of friends um and this sort of concept and story that he came up with and that all links back to what is happening now if i'm describing it badly it's because i don't know that much yet (laughs) so i'll leave it there i'm intrigued but i will talk about it when in more of depth when i've read more i already own uh, two, three, and four. So I'll get through those and then have more of a chat about how I'm feeling. But I'm getting, I'm hopeful that this is good. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bought more. <laughs> and finally, Children of Dune. This was picked up because we were getting heat waves and I didn't want to read about cold Viking fantasy it felt wrong um so thankfully june was ready to go um (laughs) i i think i preferred this one more than dune messiah um i i don't know what the general opinion is about messiah um i think some people like it because it finishes off paul's story um but I feel like there was a lot more going on in this. Uh, we get Jessica coming back and being a key player. Uh, we get a little bit more, well, a lot more scheming between people. Um, and we get a lot of fasc- fascinating new concepts. Um, 
So the reason why I put this last is that I just want to sit and talk about the spoilery stuff for a little bit. Um, if you're not interested in spoilers, that is fine. Um, I will just say that I did really enjoy this. I wondered if this is where I'd leave June because I know this is the end of like the Atreides arc, I guess. But as ever, June just keeps pulling me back in. I get to that ending and I'm fascinated by where it will go. Uh, and you know what helps is that I've seen some funny memes <laughs> about book four and uh, they intrigue me. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it for the memes. Um, I've already bought God of Emperor. It'll probably sit there for a few months again, like all the others have. Um, but yeah, at some point I will carry on. If you've only read the first Dune, I definitely encourage you to at least read the next two. Messiah is quite short um, and I really think there's a lot of interesting stuff happening in this one. Um, maybe even more than the original Dune, potentially. So yeah, definitely check it out. So now, Oh, if you're if you're not here for the spoilers, then bye bye. See you later. Bye. It's spoiler time. <laughs> so I just want to talk about some of the things that I found really interesting. One was the idea that the the twins have access to almost endless knowledge. Um, one kind of hint of this that's kind of brilliant um is that oh god what's he called Leto that's it yeah he's called Leto um Leto brings up a memory or like, I can't remember if it's like a, sn a snippet from a book or a limerick or something and he mentions is it York or London he mentions an English city which is just so cool you know it, it says it points out that you know in this world our world existed but like so far out of current living memory that no one else knows and no one would know what he was talking about if he mentioned it um but another aspect of this is that the twins have access to lots of old knowledge and old skills. One of those being the fact that uh, one of the twins is able to tell herself that her twin is dead, her brother is dead, and she fully convinces herself that this is the truth. She shuts off that knowledge that he's actually alive um, and goes about as if he's dead. This isn't acting this is almost like a switch in her brain is telling her one truth and only a phrase can bring the true knowledge back which obviously her brother knows and will speak when the time's right so i thought that was fascinating um and then all the stuff about the golden path and where that leads which it's so interesting um, because it just culminates in him covering his, what are they called, sand trout? The sand trout are what turn into eventually the giant worms but basically they can like form a weird gelatin like sort of skin on top of your skin so he covers himself in these fish and then he's just wandering wander about in this fake suit that gives him powers. It's so weird. I love it. <laughs> and it's with this that he becomes something that's not human. Um, and then the fact that he finds Paul. Uh, you know, sort of predictably this mystic character that's been wandering around telling truths to people and preaching. He might be called a preacher, actually. Um, yeah, predictably he is Paul and they get to have a chat and Paul says, look, part of the reason I went into the desert is because there's a step I didn't want to take. 
you know, he'd go, he'd let his armies go kill millions across the universe, but uh, there's another step he didn't want to take. <laughs> um, but his son is willing to. And I really want to see what the implications of that are for the universe. Um, I already know that the next book is, what, like a thousand years in the future? Um, so it's going to be a whole new cast and normally in most books that would be kind of disappointing but so much of Dune for me is about these concepts and I can't wait to see where that concept goes. God damn it, Dune, you just keep pulling me back in. <laughs> Well, I don't know why my voice is dying, so we'll call it there. I'm out of books. That's everything I read in August. Uh, I can't wait for the end of the year. I say end of the year, for the last few months of the year, because I really want to dive more into some more fantasy books that I've got stacked waiting. Um, I really need a big, big old fantasy book. I'm so in the mood, so I'm trying to hurry through the book that I'm on <laughs> to get there. Um, tell me what you've been reading what have you read in August um, hopefully you found something good or what you plan on reading what you're going to read in September let me know and I'll see you in the next video bye